Hello and good evening. My name is Chinemarim Joseph and welcome to today's edition of You and the Economy. As many accounts have shown, especially those provided through autobiographies, biographies, verbal renditions and sometimes fables, the path that led to the birth of many successful businesses are often lit by the sudden flash of novel inspiration and ideas which are subsequently brought to fruition and reality by the combination of a stroke of good fortunes and fortuitous access to funding. This rather intriguing scenario is usually the background of businesses that owe their origins to the smart thinking of their promoters even when such people had no access to the quantum of funds required to bring their bright ideas from the realm of sheer imagination to reality when they were first conceived. This sequence of events captures the background to the subject of today's edition of You and the Economy, where a bright idea by a practically Indigent Nigerian was transformed into a thriving business after a lackluster takeoff through the uplift provided by one of the intervention schemes of the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, in the economy, which is the Agribusiness Small and Medium Enterprise Investment Scheme, AXMIS. Although Taste of Elvira and its range of coconut value chain products are now recognized names in Nigeria's agribusiness sector today. The company may never have attained its present lofty heights. No thanks to the lack of funds experienced at the onset by its proprietor in translating his laudable dreams for the company into reality. Today, Taste of Elvira is making waves because the bright business objectives of its founder came into contact with those of Axmis, which resulted in its ability to access a loan from the scheme to realize those objectives. In continuation of our series, extreme the impact of the interventions of the CBN in the economy, we now bring you the story of Taste of Elvira and how its operations are gradually setting it out as yet another successful beneficiary of the intervention initiatives of the Apex Bank in the economy. To the uninitiated, especially the lay ones who lack deep knowledge of the field of agriculture and its branch known as agronomy, coconut derived from the palm tree family hold no significant value beyond the fact that the fleshy whitish fruit embedded in the coconut pod is usually consumed as snacks. The fact that the fruit of the coconut palm tree is generally not seen as belonging to the staple food category in the Nigerian context often make the fruit-bearing crop to be treated with somewhat scant regard, especially in matters relating to the attainment of self-sufficiency in food production in the country. But unknown to many, coconut are veritable raw materials for driving a profitable value addition industry, specializing in the production of a variety of processed snacks and other coconut derivatives, a few of which are used as condiments in preparing other edibles. Nzube Chuku Chukudum holds a Bachelor of Science degree in Industrial Chemistry as well as a Master's in Business Administration MBA degree, both obtained from Abia State University, Uturu, Abia State. He is also trained in Information Technology, IT, and had mostly been deriving his living as an IT practitioner after graduating from the university in 2004. Chukudum's curriculum vitae reveals one clear thing about his calling. He is neither a farmer nor a specialist in agriculture or agronomy. But by a sheer twist of fate, 
Chukudum today runs a budding small-scale coconut processing company, Taste of Elvira. He now speaks on how he happened upon the business of coconut processing. Initially, I was thinking of what can I import, but I don't have enough funds to bring in a container and all that, so I started looking for locally what can I produce to be able to sell to the market. So a lot of things come to my mind. Then one day I bumped into a supermarket, seeing coconut oil station on the, on the shelf. The coconut oil is just bottled in a normal local container. So I knew this is a local content. I walk up to the cashier, I say, how much do you sell this? They told me the price, wow. So I say, if this person can produce this coconut and sell in a store like this, I think I can try my own and see, possibly package it much better than the one I'm seeing, I believe it will sell. So that's how the journey started. I decided to try, I, I took um, 2,000 naira, went to the uh, market and bought 20 pieces of coconut and tried coconut oil. That's how I started. After doing that, um, I get a little quantity, just a half bottle, uh, half container of a uh, normal bottle water. So I, I start showing it to some people. Look at what I did, and along the line, I met someone. Uh, I met my sister. She took interest, and they bought it for me for four thousand naira. Wow! I was so happy. So what did I do? I now called Badagri, and I said, "Why can I buy coconut in big quantity?" And now. Engage a contact in Badagri. Then a bag of coconut was around 8,000. So I added extra uh, 4,000 and sent. Two days later, they brought, brought a bag of coconut for me. I started producing more. Now I start going to supermarkets, introducing it. As time goes on, we start improving from coconut oil. We start adding coconut flour because the flour comes from the chaff we extract while we are doing the coconut oil then we are normally throw it away someone told me this is money you can dry it and package it as well people use it for flour people use it to use as swallow and so many things so start thinking how can I dry that and I start looking for options and all that along the line someone told me why can't you try coconut chips it's selling so I started looking into that area however before long, Chukudum came to the realization that his coconut processing outfit was simply operating at subsistent level. For even as the venture kept Taste of Elvira engaged, his company's scope of operation was so limited that its efforts all but amounted to a lot of motion but no movement. Orders could not be met because the company did not even have a dedicated factory. Understandably, under such a disconcerting circumstance, the future had looked bleak for Taste of Elvira, especially because Chukudum could not raise the quantum of funds required to make his dream to become a recognized player in coconut processing a reality. Then um, I was doing them in my parlor. At some point, when I wanted to enter the big market, stores like ShopRite Spa, I couldn't know, and I started looking for a factory. Then my parlor cannot contain it any, anymore. I will go to work in the evening. By the time I come back, I have staffs working while I'm away in my parlor. So everywhere will just be messed up and all that. So luckily, we got a place. And then um, Navda came and inspected and said it's OK for the facility. And that's how I got the number. Necessary and important as it was, obtaining NAFDAC number for its products was not enough to generate the large quantity of output required to make Taste of Elvira a successful business. Indeed, it remained clear that without access to funding at a friendly interest rate, the company may end up as yet another statistic on the list of well thought out but perpetually underperforming business enterprises destined for failure. But that was not what fate had in store for Taste of Elvira. By a stroke of fortune, Chukudum had sometime in 2019 stumbled on information about the agribusiness small and medium enterprise investment scheme, AXMIS, a Central Bank of Nigeria intervention scheme which grants loans to successful applicants at concessionary interest rates to fund the businesses adjudged by the bank to hold firm promise of success. Then most of my productions are manual, so the staffs are getting exhausted trying to scrape the coconut, trying to dry and all those. So 
I started looking for funds. I approached some banks, but the rate is high, and um, I couldn't afford such risk. I was having a discussion um, with one of our coconut association group, and they now said uh, admin's loan and all that. I just decided to give it a try. I applied, and uh, they invited me first time at the CBN office in Marina. That is another department then uh, from NYSA. So they interviewed me, I showed them my products, they were impressed. So they go, uh, showed me some options on how I can obtain loan from CBN, not just only from NYSA, the admins. There are some other ones, but at the end of the day, they say I should just keep my fingers crossed. They just want to know what I'm doing and how good I am at it. Well, after like six months later, I think I was sometime around January 2020, then I got a text message and I should go and open an account with a, a nice office in Ikeja that my loan has been approved. So from there, like a month or two later, they now start uh, requesting for the invoice of the machines and what I need the money for because the money wasn't given to me cash. At some point, I was just a Nigerian uh, story, I know. You, but when I got a text message that I have social amounts in my, in my account, I rushed to check uh, cash out. They say you cannot cash it out. That look at the procedure to be able to assess it. So I've been seeing the money. I know whatever it is, this money is mine. But how can I assess it? The challenge now. So they now told me the process and all that. And at the end of the day, I was able to utilize the funds. What they did was to just help me buy some machines. So they were able to dispose the money to the companies that produce those machines for me and I was able to get the machines. For Taste of Elvira, accessing Axmis has been a game changer of sorts for the company in its core business of coconut processing and the facts speak for themselves. To enable it to ramp up production and operate more formally, Taste of Elvira moved its operations to this location in the Masha Axis of Suruliri. Lagos, where it set up its small factory. Unlike the sitting room of its proprietor, the new location offered the larger space the company required to literally spread out and conduct its operations in the required units, which then collaborated to raise its performance to the next level it had aspired for. In manufacturing, a time-honored rule of the thumb in seeking to boost output is that raw materials input be increased. The reasoning is that if the volume of raw materials committed to production increases, output will itself increase, thus guaranteeing a wider market reach and increased profit, especially if product quality is sound and prices are reasonable. This rule has worked for Taste of Elvira as part of the loan it accessed is used to procure larger quantities of raw materials on a more regular basis. These pulley sacks seen here, kept in the company's store at its Suruleri location in Lagos, contain these raw materials. The increased acquisition was further made possible by the fact that upon renting a bigger office, Taste of Elvira had a much larger space to warehouse its raw materials. In production, we always need capital to purchase raw material. The loan actually helped us to, to get more, more of raw material from Badagri down to our production plant. In a bag, we have about 150 pieces of coconut. Then before the loan, we, uh, we carry, sometimes we carry up to 10 to 15. But since we assess the loan, we increase the capacity to 90. 100, 120. It depends on how we can source the coconut. Before, we, we used to do 100 kg per day, but now we increase to 500 kg. Then, although we, we are not there, we are not there, but at least we can boast of satisfying as maybe like 50% of our customers, unlike before, we used to satisfy like 10% of our customers. Another way in which the Axmis loan accessed by Taste of Elvira impacted positively on its operations and palpably too is the procurement of this 40 kVA electricity generating set which serves as an alternative source of power supply in meeting the energy needs of the company. 
This was a major boost as it rescued the company from the jaws of the massive power disruptions it had endured persistently when it was operating from Chukudum's residence, where there was no alternative source of power supply whenever there was public power outage. The outages, which were typically frequent, had meant total shutdown of production operations when they occurred. With a positive development triggered by the acquisition of the 40 kVA generator, Taste of Elvira has been able to ramp up output of its products and is now better placed to meet up with the demands for them. One of the major challenges is uh, power, right? So most times when there is no power, we can't produce or we'll just be waiting, relying on NEPA. Actually, when I assessed that loan, part of the loan they gave me was to buy a generator, which I did. That was around, uh, I think, around 40 kVA generator. That is the one I can see that we are using now. One of the reasons why Taste of Elvira had been operating in the small league before it benefited from a CBN intervention scheme to raise funds at concessionary single-digit interest rate was because it lacked a massive high-capacity industrial oven dryer to dry its coconut products as part of the process of preparing them for consumption as snacks. It was no surprise, therefore, that one of the primary acquisitions it made upon accessing funds under AXMIS was the purchase of this brand new industrial oven dryer. The new industrial oven dryer, which is arguably the mother of all game changers for the company after it accessed AXMIS, has two compartments, each with two sections of 12 trays. Each compartment of the two chambers of the oven dryer therefore has a total of 24 trays, making it 48 trays in all in the two compartments. The new oven dryer represents a vast improvement on the two smaller ones that Taste of Elvira was using previously. Unlike the new oven dryer, each of the two smaller older oven dryers has only 10 trays in all. As would be expected, the acquisition of the new oven dryer has proved to be a positive development as it has led to a dramatic increase in the output of Taste of Elvira and the situation now tastes better for the company. This is the dryer I was telling you. This is one of the benefits from the Agnes loan. This is the one I was using to dry my chips and you can see there are some products inside already, already dried ready to be brought out. This is a big dryer, an oven dryer. Um, we have 48 trays. This 24 tray, 24 tray. Before then, this is the one I'll be using. This, if you look at this, you say it's a small dryer. It's quite small and the trays are small. So the output is very low. From here, I bought this one before. These two were the ones I was using which wasn't big enough. Then, before I got the, the bigger dryer from the, from the CBN. So that is it. This one can produce times three of what the smaller dryers can give me. Beyond increasing output, the new industrial oven dryer has also enabled the company to broaden its product range. This is because the oven dryer is also used to dry raw cashew nuts to an edible state as well as to dry granular oat cereal too. Both items have now been added to the product range of Taste of Elvira alongside its signature coconut oil and coconut chips product. Waste is also being further converted to wealth by Elvira with its increased output as the company now processes the remains of the hard outer covering of the ports in comparison the coconut fruits it uses to produce coconut chips. The product is sold to companies that manufacture carbonated charcoal and those engaged in water filtration. My hard food production uh, tripled because the machines I got, I was able to produce more at the same time. So the output increased and it gives me visibility to more stores, then I'm able to now be able to play in the big 
shops. I can be able to supply stores like ShopRite, spas. I can be able to meet their demands and their order and all that. The way we actually, we, we actually started, when it comes to the production aspect, it was actually manual, which, which was a very big hard. And it doesn't increase the production capacity. But since we have access to the machines, it helps the work to be much easier. So what we could do when we are not even using the machine, we, we can now produ produce like about three times of what we do before. So it actually helped in a very good way. It's really helped me. And God really, my, ta my target is that I'll be able to meet the demand of the across the country and be able to export some other countries like Europe and America. Right now, some people buy a little quantity from me and send across to America, but it's not that much. But I know as time goes on, it's my, something I can confidently load a full container truck and say I'm sending it to this country based on the demand from that side. The improved performance of Taste of Elvira upon its accessing Axmis loan has also enabled the company to increase its workforce, even as it has been able to do this only within the ambit of what is expected of a profit-oriented small-scale business enterprise, the company has nonetheless been able to contribute its own appreciable quota to employment generation in the country, in line with one of the objectives of the CBN for its interventions in the economy. By the time we we'll get this loan and get more machines and the demands are coming, we we'll start employing more hands. We'll have up to 10 staffs up there about now. Some are on contracts based on when we we'll have more demands. They come in, they are someone permanent. And um, it's really interesting seeing some young youths that really want to work. Chukudum, the proprietor of Taste of Elvira, is delighted and indeed deeply appreciative of the fact that his company was able to access a loan from CBN's Axmis. He said the breakthrough strengthened his belief that the system can, after all, work in Nigeria. He is, however, worried that many of his fellow citizens targeted by Axmis and other CBN intervention schemes continue to shun them out of skepticism and the misconception that the schemes are skewed in favor of only the privileged and well-connected in the society and that any attempt by the underprivileged to subscribe to them is suddenly destined to be an exercise in futility. He urges Nigerians to purge themselves of this stereotyped notion and show faith in the intervention schemes. Chukudum added that based on his personal experience, he believes that with bankable project ideas, it is relatively easy to successfully access the schemes for funds. There's a group of friends where we're in a group chat. Some people were saying the Agnes is a fraud. I told them I'm a beneficiary. Some did not believe. Some called me by the side. Is it true? I said, yes. Have something you're doing. Present your right documentation. Give them your business plan. Once you are sure of what you're doing, I think then when, when we were assessing this loan, we when we went for the training, we we're up to 200 or 300. And then after the training, we created a WhatsApp group where we we'll communicate. So during those periods, a lot of people started agitating, see Nigeria, they are normal, this, that, they will promise and fail and all that. Then along the line, everybody started saying, I got a message, do you get this message? Everybody were getting the messages. People started visiting their office, their factories, they will com uh, comment that some group of people visited my facility, this is very really low, if you know. So I can tell you from the number of us that went for the training, I, I can bet you 80% of us were able to get that uh, facility. Not because we have anybody, because I don't have anybody. I'm in Lagos, I'm from Anambra State. So I won't tell you maybe because uh, I know somebody, that I, can, I didn't know anybody. But if you're doing the right thing and have the proper documentation and be able to present it well to them, trust me, you will get the money. Personally, I'm, I'm grateful for the loan because without the loan, we can't be where we are today. Um, I'm, I'm very grateful for the CBN governor and the president of Nigeria that made this loan to reach us. I know that some people might assess this loan and they will default. Some might decide to take the money and run away, probably relocate. Some might decide not to pay back and all that. But that shouldn't discourage the 
them from still um, helping the youth. That loan really helped me, and I believe it helped a lot of people because I'm still talking to my WhatsApp groups. It's really expanded my business, and I'm very appreciative. So I encourage the children to continue doing what they are doing, and um, at the long run, it will pay for the country. You're welcome back. Although it may look like a fairy tale, the story of Taste of Elvira is real. And once again, it shows that the CBN has been registering profound impact in the Nigerian economy through its intervention schemes. From the living room of its promoter, where it could not boast of sustained operations, even in the face of impressive demand for its products by its customers, Taste of Elvira has overcome the myriad challenges of lack of office space, inadequate raw materials, irregular power supply, and sundry problems to become a notable supplier of coconut value chain products to leading supermarket chains in the country. Yet, the company had been spotted and offered financial assistance by the CBN even when it was barely surviving and was not a known name in its sector. A strong pointer to the non-discriminatory stance and fairness that characterized the general criteria adopted by the CBN in reviewing the applications of intended beneficiaries of his intervention schemes. It is on that note that we draw the curtain on today's edition of You and the Economy. Please join us again next week for another edition of the program. Until then, it's goodbye for now.